It's where they are coming to have some fun, and it's one of the most popular cons here that we have in the Great White North. In fact, I am very happy to be here for the third time because, yeah, we've been here before, but now we get to do it with a completely different take. That's, well, out for me anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am standing here right across from the Convention Center in Hamilton, Ontario for the 2016 edition of Con Bravo! And so, greetings people of the world, Matthew back with you here in Navarra Autism for day one of Con Bravo. Um, I'm just doing some recording here at the end of the day. I will show you all of the stuff that happened during the time that Con Bravo started. Now I am here not as a patron. As you can see, I am here representing Hamilton's Extra Life Guild. And so I am really looking forward to being part of being a part of a group that is of course involved with a very important charity group. And that of course was a group that we were involved with last year and by virtue of being part of that group we had the opportunity, those of us who were involved with Hamilton's Extra Life Guild, to come here and promote ourselves here at Con Bravo. And so that's exactly what we're doing. And so um, it is now after um, our time in the convention center has come to an end for the day. It is day one. And as you can see there are a few people who are all decked out in cosplay and whatnot, but yeah, we're going to show you some of the interesting things that happen from the Extra Life perspective here on Day One at Con Bravo. Um, so, without further ado, let me show you what happened here on Friday. p.m. and the doors are now open which means that the con has begun <laughs> and that's only what's going on here on the first floor yeah this just happened <laughs> and away he goes Oh, he's gonna create havoc among the vendors. <laughs> Yeah, certainly had the opportunity to see quite a few people who are going to be involved with this. Um, people around us are other people who are doing plugs for um, the various cons that they're doing, as well as, of course, we're promoting ourselves for the Extra Life that we'll be doing later this year. And I hope that you guys will get to join us, of course, representing Team Hamilton. The only team out there that has nothing to do with stealing other people's Pokemon. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we've, well, the, everyone's already gone in for the opening ceremonies and whatnot, and th other things of that nature, checking out the vendors who are over on that side. Um, certainly, I've learned a lot from this gentleman over here. The person we're sitting to is representative 
of the largest anime con in Canada, which is Anime North in Toronto. We've certainly had the opportunity to talk, and he's certainly been around the con circuit a lot in his life, this gentleman here on the right. And he um, he's the head of the Anime North Con, and he's talked about all the anime cons and other cons that he's been to, and he's certainly provided a wealth of experience and knowledge in the time that we've been talking with each other, and he just has, uh, he has a lot to talk about with what he's gained and what he's learned. He's given out some of the um, stuff from Anime North in the past, um, so he's provided us, um, he provided myself and it's my partner with a Anime North convention book from last year, and Mung. And that's one of the things he's given us. He also gave us some of the little um, otaku passes as well from Anime, Nor Anime North. Just excess stuff that they want to pass around as part of promotion material for um, Anime North for next year. So it makes sense to, when you have a surplus, share with other people and put the word out. It's a good idea. And this gentleman here, he, he knows what he's doing. I mean, Anime North has been around for 20 years now. And so I had the opportunity to go in 2006. They know what they're doing out there, and it's certainly enjoyable if you ever make the journey up here to Canada and you decide to take the path up to Toronto at the end of May for Anime North. Definitely worth your while. Go do it. It's a great experience. Sometimes we actually want to the Alright, so people are still filing in and still lots of things are still moving at a bit of a slow rate, so we're going to take a break in the action and we're going to make our way over into the vendors. Yeah, I was really surprised about that. Of course, we're going to see a lot of cosplayers too. All right. <laughs> so, what are they providing for us this year at Con Bravo? Well, right out, of the, right out of the gate, a fancy umbrella with a whole bunch of animals on it, and as well as DC emblems too. A hard stress for those of you who are into Doctor Who. There's a lot of toys over on this side, all of various otaku aspects. <laughs> and we got what looks like perla beads over here. Various things here: Iron Man, Link. Um, <laughs> They even have a Keaton mask from Ocarina of Time, and even the Fallout 4 mascot, whose name I have no idea because I don't play Fallout 4. Nor do I intend to. But for those of you who are interested, go at it. And then we have some interesting little prints of various artwork. This wolf with the antlers is a particular note, I think. <laughs> Like, like seriously, on, only in a person's imagination can you come up with stuff like this. You got jewelry over here. You got massive movie posters over here, including what looks like a Suicide Squad print. In Squad We Trust. Um, how about no? <laughs> That's a little mini stuff over here and oh, someone's got a lot of clothing to get off their hands always got to pay props to the weapons dealers who are willing to either get it from someone else or actually craft it on their own <laughs> okay someone decided to create some Pokemon X-ray shirts of the original starter po Pokemon of the original Pokemon. And even some advertising shirts for various cities in the original Pokemon Red and Blue. <laughs> Cosplay wigs, always fun. <laughs> what else can we find around here? Well, how about stuffed animals? Stuffed animals of various kinds, larger ones, beanie baby size. You're my little pony for some reason. But hey, who am I to argue with bronies? <laughs> 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 
sitting puppy. Board games over here. Probably a few you could probably give to Stephen George, I'm sure he could. Oh, I actually recognize one of them. Sheriff of Nottingham, which was actually featured in a Stephen Mail video back last year. Oh, Sushi Go and, oh, and the, the Stephen George card game, Coup. Yeah, I remember this game being featured very prominently, where only one can survive. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, so board games over here. Fancy chopsticks, if you're ever so inclined. Lots of anime characters being featured on um, pillows and blankets by the looks of it. And like, I, I swear, there, there must be at least a thousand different takes on Harley Quinn. Like, what, like what, what, does, what does she not look like? And now they've got, of course, with Suicide Squad, they've got the completely new take on her. Like, what do they think of next? Hey, Amaterasu, think I'll be able to draw better with you in, o in Okami once I get back to that next week. Hopefully that'll happen. I mean, hey, <laughs> if, ho hopefully you can give Hatsune Miku a better singing voice than what she currently has. Because, <laughs> yeah, you can't create a voice with a computer. Like, that, that, that's, that, like that's what auto-tone is for. That's what auto-tune is for, people. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a doctor? <laughs> Since when? <laughs> and books over on this side, including, for those of you interested, The Art of Finding Dory, sitting next to The Art of the Angry Birds movie for some reason. <laughs> Isn't that a stark contrast? Happy little Finding Dory, and on the other side, Angry Birds. <laughs> and a whole bunch of Pokemon plushies over here. Masks of various people, and for some reason, they stuck the Bane mask on a Spider-Man mask. Don't ask me why. <laughs> <laughs> that just looks weird. Like, if they were trying to cl combine DC with Marvel, like, probably not the best example. And more pillows of various anime. And they even gave Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! a combination with both Dark Magicians. What else were I able to find? I think some people are still opening up stuff. So we get out into some clearer room. Oh, I remember these. Glassware of various things associated with stuff. Like, I see Skyrim, Samsaran, The Hunger Games, Captain Falcon. They just added Overwatch by the looks of it this year. Of course, since Overwatch was introduced this year. Green Lantern, Pokemon, Batman, Stars, whatever that's supposed to be, Raccoon Police Departments. Is that from like, um, Zootopia or something? Trying to depict some of the logos that are here. Like, so, some of them are rec more recognizable, others all ask you to try and help me out. Uh, of ones I don't have, but Even, like, characters I don't have. little flasks as well to go with the glassware. Yeah, no shortage of stuff around here to make you uh, <laughs> drool with fanboy. Drool as a fanboy. <laughs> Alright, so while we're making our way towards the middle of the vendors, Hats to wear, including, of course, the Pokemon Ash Ketchum cap that every Pokemon fan must have. <laughs> oh, my personal favorite, a Death Note. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, surprise, surprise, look what's directly above it. Perhaps I can write her name in the Death Note and maybe they'll stop creating her. Or even creating remakes of her. Because, yeah, like, seriously. <laughs> When, when will they actually make Sailor Moon a legit superhero? <laughs> Probably never. 
And over here, chainmail, including for some reason a chainmail tie and a belt buckle. Like, damn, man. Even a chainmail Spider Man hood. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you want to be Spider-Man, but don't, can't breathe through spandex? Use chainmail. <laughs> and on this side, more board games. More board games, including Game of Thrones in various versions, including a a clue Game of Thrones. <laughs> Like Tyrion Lannister in the Stark household with, I don't know, an axe or something. Like, so sometimes I look at these things and I think to myself, like, <laughs> I mean, obviously they're taking advantage of popular fandom when they come up with this stuff, but you got to wonder, like, how many people are willing to bend over backwards to get stuff like this? And I know there are, you, well, if you're watching this, like, don't answer that, you already know the answer to that question. And you're right. <laughs> Ooh, retro game consoles. NES? Or, no, they're not actually. Oh, okay. I get it. Well, these are actual carts. These are actual cartridges. But what's next to it are <laughs> not. Well, they're not as advertised. Heavy <laughs> sweet. I found them where I box like a hacker. Yeah, lots of old school games. Uh, Steve and George, if you are watching this, get your butt over to Con Bravo next year. You must. You must do so. I mean, heck, I'll even buy you a game if I have to. I don't know. Whatever it takes to bring you here for next year. Lots of. Yeah, these would be steampunk goggles. But not in the traditional steampunk sense. Well, this side is the traditional sense, but this other side here? Whoa. There's even a Hello Kitty steampunk. Look at, I mean, look at this. A Hello Kitty steampunk. Like, who does this stuff? <laughs> like, wow, a Hello Kitty steampunk. That, like, that, that's... But, like, I, for all you Hello Kitty fans, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> And over here we've got more classic video game cartridges. Um, yeah, th those look like, yeah, really old school um, Sega Genesis games is what they are. Genesis games, Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, then you got PS over here. Oh, Xenoblade Chronicles is here for $80. So yeah, and Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, $100. Like, yeah, insert MasterCard ad here. <laughs> What's on this side? Oh, Lunar and Lunar 2. One of, one of these days I will have to play Lunar 2. I can't bring myself to play the original Lunar because uh, my, my history with the original Lunar... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, how much for Lunar 2? I gotta know. 160. I remember 10 years ago at Anime North when I went there, there was a full case of Lunar 2 for 200. So yeah, compared to 10 years later, or 10 years ago, this is a bargain. <laughs> What else can we find over on this side? What are we gonna find over here? An Iron Man mask that's not a full mask. One you would use for Halloween. <laughs> Weaponry from swords to little mini daggers. And decal stickers for some reason it says over here. And temporary tattoos with any of the various designs to please any fanboy. 
including what I always thought was, for the longest time, was a mouse, the Naruto emblem for um, the thing that they have on their headbands. Yeah, they, they say it's supposed to be a leaf, but I've always said it looks like a mouse because, look at it, you see the head here, you see the body here, and you see the tail. Like, it, it, yeah, it, this thing does look like a mouse more than it does a leaf because, yeah, head, body, tail. Like, that, that's what it looks like to me. I always thought it was so weird. <laughs> so as we now cross back over, Let's see what else we can find that we haven't already walked in front of. Here's the jewelry vendor. And this is what they got, including NES controller earrings, among other things. NES controller earrings. <laughs> but yeah, those are really tiny, tiny. I do have to say that those are, those are very tiny, tiny, but over on this side, both ma mushroom, Mario mushrooms, Koopas, Care Bears as well. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> then more games on this side, more modern, the Xbox 360 and PS2 and PS3. I wonder, heck, they even have cartridges as well, or consoles as well. Let me take a look at the PS3 collection. I wonder if there's a particular game here that no, okay, might that's, catch that's my attention, but so. it's not looking like it. Those of you who are wondering, I was thinking Eternal Sonata. <laughs> but I had to find out. Heck, they even have a PS2 console, but I'm gonna cuss a lot. <laughs> Holy cow, a, tur a turbo graphics console, wow. With a turbo booster. <laughs> and, it even, and it even comes with a, the attachment as well, apparently. 250 each, so 500 total for this turbo graphics console. I've never actually seen a turbo graphics console in my life. This is the first. And yeah, that's definitely going back in video gaming history. <laughs> What else do we have here? Oh, that's interesting. The way that they set up these pieces of art representing the original three legendary birds in Pokemon. Like, I'm, gu I'm guessing it's like a crossover with something else. Maybe one of you guys in the comments can post and tell me like what this is supposed to be exactly representing. Make anime great again. <laughs> Like, is that even a legitimate statement? <laughs> Alright, what else can we find? What can we find? Oh, it looks like we have... Oh, that's interesting. Like, I remember seeing those these little weaving circles back when... Back when I was a kid, my mom used to use these all the time. I always to use, make stuff on these um, weaving circles all the time. In fact, if you play Final Fantasy XIV or Rami Born slash Heaven's Ward and you do crafting as a weaver, like, you would get something that looks like that. You would get a weaving circle that looks like that for doing your weaving. That, that's, like, really cool. I'm, I haven't seen one of those in, in real life in forever. Then we got little Pokeball... Um, I don't know, what are those supposed to be? Not sure. I'm not really sure what the adipose thing is next to it. Can't really tell. And we got some more art. Based on various things, including Five Nights at Freddy's, which is... Yeah, from what I heard, they're gonna make another one. Another one is in the works, so yeah. How much is Scott Cawthon rolling in dough right now? <laughs> like, he, he really wants it. We got some... I don't know, would this necessarily be considered chain mail? Like, it is chain, but would you necessarily call it chain mail? Yes. Oh, you would? Yes. We are absolutely chain mailers. Alright, so this, so this stuff does count? Yeah, we, are, we use the 
same technique that was used by medieval smiths to make chainmail. Wow. But how, but how long would it have taken, like, f for a person back then to a m make a... It takes us. <laughs> yeah. They also would have been working with steel, we worked with aluminum. Um, oh, okay. So it's a lot easier. Oh, alright. Fair enough. <laughs> What else we got here? Yeah. Need to add to your button collection? Here's some for you. Actually, it doesn't say buttons, it says magnets. But they, but they look like pin buttons. You know, stuff that, buttons that you pin onto your um, self. In fact, there was someone I saw earlier that had a, like, was completely covered in those pin, button pins. Like, that, that, that was like really dedication from all over her clothes from head to toe, completely covered in buttons. <laughs> then some little inspirational posters inspired by various things. Of course, not a fan of the one of them in the middle. More cosplay wigs over on this side. Then... More art over here. What are the, oh, we got more um, sleeping stuff, including Doctor Who and his TARDIS, but I don't know which Doctor Who this is because the head is covered up. So yeah, and I know that each Doctor from Doctor Who ha wears a distinct outfit, so if anyone can recognize this, who this Doctor is, comment and tell me. <laughs> And then Star Wars The Force Awakens again with someone who's had their head cut off. <laughs> ah, yeah, you go out of your efforts to put out the advertising, but you can't put out the whole thing. It's kind of unfortunate. For the Steampunkers, a collection of bustiers. And then this person over here. Um, uh, yeah, look, just like Officer Jenny from Pokemon. Like, I was trying to remember for the longest time what kind of out the specific name for the kind of outfit she wears. I actually needed to have someone remind me what it was called. It's a Kigurumi. Because I've heard the term used before. I looked it up on Google and YouTube, and a lot of people wear an outfit just like she does. And so that, it's called a Kigurumi. There's another version as well that it's like a pajama that's basically a hooded pajama is what it is for those who aren't familiar with it. So yeah, I, I heard the name. I'd seen some stuff like that a couple of years ago, but I couldn't remember earlier for the life of me what the proper name for it was. But uh, at least my mind has been, my memory has been jogged. <laughs> what else we got over here? Well, they see comics, but I don't know. Where's the comics? <laughs> uh, you're, out, you're advertising comics, but where are they? <laughs> uh, this side's looking a little empty. But stuff from various video games not lacking. Yeah, this, cor this corner's kind of empty. I guess they haven't all shown up yet. And what do we got here? More 8-bit stuff around Chrono Trigger, stuff from Undertale, stuff from Mega Man, Earthbound, Zelda. And all in the... And they're, they're not just 8-bit, but also 3D. That's, a, that's the really amazing thing about it, is that they're all 3D, too. That's the really crazy thing about it. And then we got more anime slash manga as clothing. The one on the right here that looks like a strawberry, I, th that, I think that's really hilarious. Yeah, I, want, I wonder if these are things adapted from something or if they are original creations. <laughs> well, we know this one isn't. <laughs> yes, we have seen you all too many times. And more s stuff based on stuff that is very well known. And okay. That's very interesting that this couple in front of me, one, that they're dressed up all fancy, but they've turned their stuff into Espeon and Umbreon. That's, that's very interesting, the way that they've done this. More art around, oh, okay, you didn't need to see that. 
<laughs> I didn't need to see that. And neither did you. <laughs> you didn't need to see that either. Uh, World of Warcraft? Uh, it's actually just a dungeon building for you. Okay. Like dungeons and Dragons and Hardcore, where you build your dungeon as you go. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Hi there, have you tried cupcakes yet? Um, no. Would you like to? Um, no, I'm good, but could, could you explain what it's all about? Sure. Because, yeah, I see your little, um, Moscow-inspired, um, setting here. So what's it all about? Okay, I, I, because yeah, I also noticed, um, that it's based on Russian nesting dolls, is yes, it? Yes, that's right. So what Cupkins is, it is a smart casual game. It is, um, basically Farmville meets Candy Crush, but with Russian dolls, effectively. Uh, however, uh, the game is a lot smarter, it's a lot more strategic. It was nominated for a Best Casual Game at the Video Game Awards last year. Oh, wow. And it is not actually out yet, um, which is very, which is a uh, pleasant surprise. So this was a Facebook game only, it still is only on Facebook, but we are here at Com Bravo collecting for more feedback before we launch it, uh, probably late this year or early next year on the day. Wow. Well, I wish you all the best. Good luck with that. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey, why don't you grab one of these? Oh, oh, thank you. So that's connection to the game right there on the back. So. That's, what, that's really cute. Okay. Are, you, are you videotaping for a vlog? Yep. Very good. Cool. Thank you. All right. Oh, what do we have here? Some sort of Wii U game that I have no idea what this is. Mario okay, called Runbo. Yeah, yeah, the B, the B and the A. That looks interesting. Anything else? Uh, I've not yet covered. Well, more wigs over here. <laughs> and then for the card enthusiasts. For the card enthusiasts all over, here is something for you. In fact, it even has... Okay, I wasn't even aware this was a legal card in Yu-Gi-Oh! But, yeah, apparently Silvori Kalkos is in play. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> I sure didn't. <laughs> wow, they definitely base a lot of stuff on a lot of the old school Yu-Gi-Oh! In fact, there's all three of the Egyptian cards. Of course, they were, you can't, they're not tournament legal. In fact, I wonder how many people who still play in Yu-Gi-Oh! card tournaments actually use cards from way back when. Because this game is 15 years old now. And you wonder how many people still play Yu-Gi-Oh! using their old school cards in modern tournaments. Just have to wonder, just have to know, like, is that still a thing? Or just the cards of today simply proven to be more meritous? <laughs> then more games over here, including Magic the Gathering. Popular thing here at Comp Bravo, the mystery bags. You have no idea what's in it and you'll never know until you actually buy the thing. <laughs> And some more class little card games, including a Pokemon Monopoly. In fact, this, in fact, there's even two versions actually of Pokemon Monopoly. There's a Kanto over here for red and blue, and a Johto for I'm guessing gold and silver. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really up to speed on where had what. <laughs> and then finishing them off with some. Collection of posters. Oh, okay. It's not made of paper, they're made out of fabric. Alright. Okay, so. Alright. Okay, I, and okay, I, I can see the, the little nubs at the end. Alright, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Various branded hats. Okay. And then a lot more stuff, animal Pokemon, and little 
anime dolls by the looks of it. Yeah, that's pretty much what is all being offered this year by Con Bravo vendors. And by the looks of it, someone actually tried to over here cross Legend of Zelda with Mortal Kombat, Ocarina of Time with Mortal Kombat, by having Sheik using the chain spear on Link like Scorpion would do on an opponent. But yeah, the, but yeah, these are all crossovers. And <laughs> Luke and Leia with Darth Vader as a happy family. <laughs> They're like, that would ever happen. <laughs> And then Pokemon crossed over with um, Inside Out. But yeah, lots of crazy combinations over here. But yeah, there you go. Your crazy collection of stuff to sell among the vendors here at Con Bravo 2016. <laughs> Definitely a diverse collection of fanboy goodies. So just, oh yeah. So yeah, I just got back to having a seat here at the Extra Life booth. Um, the person, the people in the steampunk outfits, um, actually just got proposed. So yeah, I just saw the, the proposal just as I was about to sit down and pick up my camera again. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, a couple of just proposed here at Con Bravo. That's really neat. I'm happy for her. These two. I, w I wonder how many times pe this has happened before at Con Bravo, but that was really neat to see that just in time. Wish I could have actually had out the camera to be able to show the whole thing, but can't win them all, and that was really nice. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> so do I. <laughs> that looks like someone's trying to. <laughs> create the C-3PO outfit, but it looks like his outfit keeps falling apart because I guess the outfit's creator has to keep <laughs> repairing it. Like, I, I, that's, that must be really rough for this guy to have to... They created this outfit for um, C-3PO, but they're having a hard time trying to keep it together. I mean, I wish him the best as far as trying to keep that thing together, but... Yeah, not easy to be able to do that. Remember the person who was decked head to toe in buttons that I mentioned before? I found them, or rather they came back. And there, yeah, there they go, completely adorned buttons. It's a crazy hat that I have no idea what it's supposed to be, but hey, it's covered in buttons, so it counts. Yeah, I'm just thinking to myself, like, what kind of, like, you probably would have to try and capture a Gyarados in a Pokeball that big. <laughs> I mean, look, look at this thing. I mean, you, that, that is definitely a ball intended for a Gyarados or some other massive Pokemon. <laughs> like, you're, you're not catching a Pikachu in that thing. <laughs> It is walking away, but yes, the ultimate lightsaber. The ultimate lightsaber right there is running away. But you can still see its flashing lights as it disappears off into the sunset. So here's the thing I've noticed. I've noticed quite a lot of few people wearing various forms of Pikachu ears and tail as either like this, or like a hoodie, or a, a sweater, or something like that. But I have yet to see a Pikachu Beanie Baby. Said Beanie Baby will of course belong to one was saying, no, no, of course, was not able to join us a year ago. But it's my hope that I will be able to notice her sooner or later. Hopefully, if not tonight, hopefully tomorrow, because, yeah, she should be frequently ting the floors around here, because Stone Control is not until late afternoon tomorrow, 
and then the, they have their there's an autograph session that starts way early in the morning. So we'll see how this goes. And so now that the night is over, I get the opportunity to, well, for a while anyway, get to chill out by a nice little simulator fire while I closed off this vlog. So yeah, that was day one here at Con Bravo 2016. So was definitely a good first day for get, just getting to enjoy everything that comes by. Something I should point out while I got you guys is that um, I didn't get this on camera because this was something that was spur of the moment and was not expected. Um, there was a couple of people who were dressed up as characters from Undertale. Now I know that um, Papyrus and Sons are the most popular so far. Uh, j just saw some weird thing walk by some weird person in costume walked by. But yeah, we had a, there was a couple of people dressed in Undertale costumes. Um, I know that Papyrus and Sans are very popular, but this pair was dressed as Asgore and Toriel. And when I saw the Toriel, I just um, made out, the, um, I just uh, said the first line that she says in the game. Oh, what a, what a horrible creature torturing such a poor innocent youth. And this actually got um, the person playing Toriel got her attention and she actually um, reached into her bag and pulled out some um, some tarts for me. And so she gave me one and I, then I proceeded to ask her, is it butterscotch or cinnamon? And so she d did some quotes from Undertale that were really hilarious that, that Toriel would say. So it definitely was... Um, quite a nice way to finish. Um, there was also had an opportunity to meet up with someone who I have seen in past videos, and you've actually seen in past videos here at Comp Bravo. Um, Zach Chillman was here. <coughs> Sorry, Zach Chillman was um, at our booth, and so since we weren't having much business going on. Since we didn't have much business going on, we just had the opportunity to talk quite a bit about what we're expecting out of Con Bravo this year, what we're expecting from the Runaway Guys panel for Throne Controllers, what we're expecting from the return of Masayanella, which, by the way, um, he showed me, Zach showed me a tweet where um, it turns out that Masay missed her flight to go to Toronto to then make her way over here to Hamilton. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of unfortunate. But hopefully she was able to make a flight after that, and hopefully she's here now. Um, that would be nice, because, yeah, we, we missed Masay last year, and if we really did enjoy seeing her last year and of course the views on my video when I mer first met her at Con Bravo two years ago will reflect that. But I'm definitely, we, we all are hoping, those of us who are Masay and Ella fans, that she is indeed returned to Con Bravo and that we will be able to get to see her and all of her Pikachu beanie baby on top of her head glory. <laughs> Because yeah, that's of course how she is making her, her makes herself identifiable to others. But yeah, that's going to do it. Also, as well, um, Nintendo Capri Sun actually walked by our booth right before the con started, and actually gave me a fist bump when I called out to him. So I said, "Hey, Tim, how are you? Welcome back!" And he walks up over to me and fist bumps me. So yeah, that was pretty sweet. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much what happened on day one here at Com Bravo. So thank you very much everyone for watching and I hope that I will see you guys again tomorrow for day two of Com Bravo, where of course the main highlight will be the Runaway Guys Throne Controllers. And hopefully I'll be able to as well get the opportunity to go um, say hello to Masay, but it could be a bit of a stretch because um, the Runaway Guys Throne Controller, or not the Throne Controllers, um, their autograph session in the morning is taking place at the same time as Super Best Friends Plays um, session over in the convention center. So, yeah, there could be a bit of a stretch, but hopefully we'll make it work and we'll see what we can do. So, yeah, thank you very much everyone for watching day one of 
Ugh, get that off me. Day one of Con Bravo 2016, and we'll see you all tomorrow. So, until next time, everyone, this is Matthew and the World Autism saying take care, and I'll see you soon.